Hey everyone, so I'm back this week with a bigger, better, more deeply programmed live rig. Um, and what I did over the weekend was I obviously set up the Digitat 2 last week and then I've got really deep into the programming of setting up um, presets and using the comb filter and basically created a track using the Digitat 2 as the main piece. And then I've also finally got into programming these um, expression sliders to control macros. And I'll, I'll go into that as well. And also on like the Bridge 6, like doing all this kind of programming to get through the set and using those. There's just loads going on and I'm really, really happy with how this live rig has developed. Um, and also in Ableton, I've done a lot more programming as well. So what I'll do is I'll just basically have a really, really quick jam with the track that I made to give you a bit of an idea of where I'm at with it. And I'll play around with all of the different bits. And then what I'll do is I'll just go through each different section and show you what I've made over the weekend. Um, and then over the coming days and weeks, what I'll do is we'll go even deeper into those individual elements and I'll show you how to program them um, and how to kind of set it up on your own live rigs as well. So let's have a quick play around. You don't want this. So yeah, pretty fun. I was a little bit rusty then actually because I had a really good jam over the weekend and then I kind of just forgot what I actually programmed, but I almost captured every part of what I've been doing. Right, so yeah, what we're going to do then is we're just going to go through all of the different elements that we've got going on. And maybe we just start with the Octatrack first because obviously you've probably seen me doing this. Most of you know how to do that. Um, you don't want this. What you can do is, let me just turn the vocals off. Um, you can set a delay up on the effects too. And what I'll do is I offer Patreon, so maybe in the video description, I'll put a little link to the settings and stuff like that. Um, what happens is basically you can control the delays of the tracks like this. But what I've done is I'll put it on 16s because I really like the 16s, right? So it usually sounds good at the end of a phrase. So check this out. You take the kick out as well. Obviously, your timing's got to be good as well. Yeah, I love that. So yeah, we've got that going on. That's really simple. Nice little feature on there. I'm not using the crossfader as much in this track, so... At the minute, I've just got like a high pass up because I've been focusing mainly on the macros, but I will do some stuff with the vocal maybe as I develop this further. There's still loads that I want to do to it. Um, so yeah, we've got that going on. I did set up um, 
a scene on Fetting 14 to basically initiate that um, initiate that delay and the way it loops around because what I wanted to do was to see what it would feel like if I did it with the crossfade and I kind of liked it actually so I feel like I can, can get a bit like sharper with that for some reason I don't know why yeah I seem to be able to like use that um better which doesn't really make sense because obviously pressing the button is a lot more rapid but with this i think it's maybe because i used this so much in my previous live setups that's why it's so like ripped and worn and stuff that i'm really used to like fucking around with that and playing with it um yeah let's move on so we've got that and then we've got the vocal which is quite simple uh, uh, you don't want just like a splice grime vocal um but then i've added some uh, uh, distortion i've added a bit of delay there and then what I've done is I set up a neighbor track, and on the neighbor track we've got that delay technique again. So on 14, the reason why I've got two delays is one of them's just giving me that that kind of like eighth, is it? Yeah, yeah, like a like a dotted um, delay. And then on 14, I can do that with it. So I can just create like little trills and glitches. Um, can even go like a lot sharper on it like that. Just a little performance aspects to it. Um, so yeah, that's the the Ots track in this kind of jam. It's very minimal in what it's doing. Normally this gets a lot of action, and I'm sure it will as it develops. But what I wanted to do mainly was focus on the Digitact first and foremost. So let's turn the vocals off and let's just go over to the Digitact now. Digitact two. Um, the main thing is obviously this sound. Let me just put this back on. Which is not a synth or a, um, a sample of a synth. It's actually um, a breakbeat sample. So let's see if we can have a little listen to that. Um, if I go to manage uh, presets. No, no, I don't want to be on there. I want to be on manage samples. Still kind of getting a little bit used to this. So yeah, the, um, the Blue Mar 10 uh, Jungle Jungle. 1989 to 1999 sample pack you can find that on um online if you just google it blue martin i think it's called um everyone knows about this pack like it's just got all the classics in and i just absolutely rinse it on every release um i mean i think a lot of it will be copyrighted probably um but yeah you've just got to fuck it just use it and mangle it no you can't really say that that's like a I lost my train of thought then. You can't, yeah, like I'm not like robbing it, robbing it. It's, um, what am I doing here? Still getting used to using this a little bit. It's a little bit different to the old uh, Digitact. Right, so bricks, let's go to that wall brick. Um, is it this one? Yeah, you can see I'm using it in, in the third slot there. So that's what it normally sounds like. And I'm not even breaking any sampling laws here because what I'm actually doing it's, it's just using the snappiest point of it. Um, the very beginning of the transient. I'm just using it to trigger the comb filter, basically. So let's have a look at the comb filter, then. Um, if I just disable that now... Let's uh, go back to this, and let's just go to the machine, put it back into multi mode. This is what it sounds like. So I'm just using it to basically trigger the comb there. Um, the feedback's all the way up, and then with the frequency, I set it to, I can't remember, yeah, 47-ish. It's not actually in tune, but I did find out that you can actually tune the comb filter, and we'll cover that in, an, in another video. Um, and then you can also open up the low-pass filter there, which I'm doing with this. And we'll go more into how these work in a second. So yeah, that's the main sound. And then the way that I program this is you can see each of the trigs has got different um, settings, so it's it's locked differently. I could recreate what I did and show you from scratch and then reload the pattern after. So let's say we've got this. What I do is just go into live record mode quantized. Wangle it around. You get some interesting stuff going on there. The other thing you can do with this, actually, as well, is if you go in... I was quite lucky, really, because it, it 
turned out really well. It's obviously quite hard to get it to to sound um, musical. And even though it's really dist like detuned and weird, I still managed to get it to work with the track. But if we put it on 36, that should be in tune. If you just stick to the whole numbers, you can kind of get something musical out of it. So let's just reload this kit. And let's just take a look at the um, LFOs and stuff as well. So. Let me have a quick look. I don't want to go too deeply into sound design because the video will end up being really long. But yeah, you can see I'm hammering the distortion, a lot of chorus in there. And then with the LFOs, I think I've set up all three. One's doing comb filter, the other one's doing um, bit reduction, and the other one's doing sample rate reduction. That only comes on when I move one of these sliders on the left and I'm doing it through uh, the modulation wheel. So I'll cover that in a second. So that doesn't initiate until later on. I don't think it does anywhere. But actually, I think I am using it right at the very end. Yeah, you can see on the last triggs, I'm using the full scale of the uh, the sequencer there. And on the very last triggs, it raises up. So if you have a listen to that, you'll notice on the fourth one, So that kind of like different pitch and then on this one it's the same again but that goes up gives it more kind of grit and stuff so the what these are doing is i'm using um uh stepped kind of sample and hold lfo set to a really low frequency and i'm also re-triggering it there so you can see i've got it on trig mode that means every trig will reset the lfo basically all i'm doing is just randomizing the amount for each of the steps so it just gives it um a bit of like organic feel to it as if it's like a modular synth and it's kind of doing its own thing it's a trick that i do on everything i do it on the syntax digitax hydrosynth all of it octatrack ableton everything i just love using random lfos yeah and if any of you have done my courses before you'll know that i go on about random lfos just as much as nick bat from sonic state goes on about pulse width modulation i'm obsessed with it just as much as he is about pulse width modulation so yeah i'm really obsessed with that it just lends itself really well to nice sound design. I think I've got a bit of beard oil on my hands because um, this keeps getting all horrible. Let me just try and wipe that off. All right, there we go. Um, so yeah, we've got that going on. And next what I'll do is probably show you the rest of the kit. And then what we'll do is we'll move on to these, which are pretty exciting. So let's just go into mute mode and listen to the rest of the kit. So we've got a kick drum, a snare, like a, a second snare, which is... I can't remember what sample I used there. It was something from a noisier pack where it was like a percussive element. And then what I've done is I've just done some sound design with that. Sent into delay. Pat. And we've got a ride as well, which is quite nice. These have all got varying amounts of distortion, sample rate reduction, things like that, just to kind of screen it up. And then if we go into the master track, um, there's more to this as well. Like the sound that you hear is not just the Digitax 2. And this is why in previous videos, um, I got a bit of flack for it from some commenters saying that all of this plus Ableton is just way too unnecessary. It's not. It's really not. For my sound, this is what I need. Um, I've done many different variations of live sets, and this one is the one that's got me really excited, and I feel like it sounds great. Um, I'll show you Ableton in a second because we're doing more processing. So on every track, we've obviously got you know the distortion, but then if we go to the master channel... Um, we've got a uh, master overdrive just a little bit actually on this one normally i'd push that further so i was sad we're at 17 sounds really nice but for this one i wanted it to be a bit more garagey and not my usual punk electro absolutely smashing it sound um because most of the the drive really comes from that and i could you know what i'm so obsessed with distortion i probably will end up smashing it up even higher as we go further down the line um so yeah that's all going into the drive on the master and then also we have got um the compressor i'm actually using it on this one and i think it works really really well let's listen to the dry um without the compression so i'm doing side chain compression on this it works but the bass is clashing with the kick now let's try and bring this down you can hear it kind of moving with it and if i
It works so well as a sidechain compressor. I'm really, really happy that they've done that. And let's just take a deeper look at the sidechain compression and see what we are affecting with it because I'm sure I did some stuff with the hats and that as well. If we go into, not machine, sorry. If we go to setup, compressor, routing. Yeah, you can see five, which is the base and then six, which is the hat. So let's just come out of, actually, I think also I did the, yeah, I've done the send effects as well. So the delay, reverb and chorus is all getting side chained as well. And it's giving that nice pumping effect. Um, let's listen to five and six. So you can hear their breathing now, but as soon as I bring that kick in, Even the hats are like bouncing now. And when you take the kick away, it gives it that space to kind of breathe. And then when you put it back in, it just really pushes down on it. I like that. Um, I could have probably done it on the uh, the rides as well. Let's see what that sounds like. Oh, I am doing it on eight as well, yeah. So yeah, eight is also um, getting that as well, which is bouncing. Yeah, you can really hear it kind of pushing down. So we've got the compressor doing that, but then also the drive as well. Everything's getting pushed into that drive and that's kind of like making it all glued and stuff. Um, while we're on the subject of drive, let's just switch over to Ableton now and take a look at my Digitats track. So just a little refresh here. Remember this, I've got the, um, the distortion and everything coming through here. So... What I've done for this one is you can see I've added some drive and um, we're using the soft shaper. I've actually got two rows set up now um, and they can, these can all be controlled via the Digitats, which we'll go into on another video. But if I go to 13, you can see that that corresponds to what's on Ableton. Um, and I can control two different pages, control all 16 macros from the Digitats and I can also modulate uh, from the digitats as well so if we press play now and in ableton if you just keep an eye on um feedback volume i think it is let me just have a look let's go back yeah feedback volume see how it jumps up there and let's have a listen to what that actually sounds like it gives it like a robotic feel when it's up right so i just did that at the end um if we go into the sequencer, look at track 13, which is that MIDI channel, you can see on the, so we've got four four bars there. On bar two and bar four, you can see on the last four tricks, I'm actually bringing up um, the feedback and you can see that there. What I like about this now is that when I created this, I wasn't even, I've got beard oil on, on the buttons again. Um, you, you can see that like what I was doing was I wasn't even looking at Ableton. I was just using this. Now it feels like I've got, Ableton's raw inside my Digitats too, which is so powerful. Um, so yeah, I can I've made it in such a way that I can just produce on this now without having to move over and look at Ableton as much as I used to. Um, so yeah, we've got that going on. Let's just move back to Ableton. Um, yeah, so this is basically just to sweeten it up, and then the second drive we've got a bit more drive there and stuff as well. Um, let's have a listen to what it sounds like without that. Let's turn it off. Listen to the difference. The difference is night and day. And then don't forget on the drum bus as well, we've also got standard clip. Just taking the tops off. Um, also on here, I've set up this EQ as well. If I turn both of those off, listen to how like muddy it sounds. With them on, we're just really letting it shine and bringing it up. And then the gain there is just to basically send that into... Um, the let me just bring this up the standard clip just bring it up to a, a level where it's kind of just clipping those tops off a little bit i'm not pushing it too hard for this track normally i do push it a lot harder than that but it just depends on the style of track that i'm making i still wanted this one to be gritty but just not as like i said before punk electro ignore this raw here because that's just that's my um old version of the ableton uh, set up because what I've done is I've changed all this around now and I wanted to keep a reference so that I can later program these other tracks in properly. So the way I've set this up is kind of how I wanted it to be laid out in the Digitat and it, it works really, really well. Um, that's pretty much it um, for that bit. Those This track's called Goop for some reason. I don't know why I've called it that, but I've saved that into there. And I said this before, like I'm not actually triggering them. I'm actually triggering uh, the global presets so you can see there. These are just references so that I can like save, um, 
save the track for backup so if anything goes wrong then i've got these all these different backups for the presets same with the pro q as well going to pro q i've started to save them now so i've got this live set eqs and you can see that's in there if i need to recall it and i've also set up little initialize uh, patches for everything as well so you can see this is an updated thing all of them have got initialize on now if i press that it puts this into a state um, of being initialized and then as soon as i kind of trigger that midi clip there all these should go back yeah you can see the settings have now gone back to these settings where they should be um so yeah that's that going on i'm not going to go into it too deeply because like i said i'm going to we're going to go into how to program all this um in other youtube videos so that's it for the digitact to for its processing um, and now what we're going to do is maybe take a look at what i'm doing with the pirate bridge 6 and how that manipulates the digitact so right so you can see on on here if we just go to the pirate mini bridge 6 you can see i've got intro main break and outro not populated these yet but i can show you how i can go from intro to main so if i just press this now you can see it's lit up and it should change over in a second and i know it's changed over because the hats are now open if i change back now they've gone back to like short hats. On the main one, I've got the hats open like this. If I go to break, let's see what's on there. I don't know what's on there. Maybe four. Four should just be silent. Let's check that one. Yeah, so it works great. And obviously, I can press this as early as I want. And what it'll do is, on the machines, it won't change until it gets to the end of... Uh, the sequence or the sequence length that I set, which is usually about um, 64 beats or four bars. That's normally what I work with. Um, so let's go back to the intro now. And you can see it's quite nice the way I've set this up. So let me just go to Chrome. This is how you um, basically program the Pirate Bridge, uh, sorry, the Pirate MIDI Bridge 6. And it can be done actually on the unit as well, but it's much quicker to do it on here and you can save these as json files for backups and you can see i can go through my set list now and you can see i've got another track there um i can color code stuff late relabel stuff um what are we on goop yeah i can go in and just like rename that rename these um i can go in and change um what cc's it's sending out so you can see there's a lot of options to send cc's out i'm um, for for basically set navigation i'm keeping it quite simple i'm just sending one CC message out or program change message, which is program change 16 for that one. And that's it for those switches. But then what I've also done is if we go to bank settings, you can see I have got switch groups, which is a really cool feature. If you use switch groups, I've set these up so they transmit and receive. And what that means is if we go back to the Pirate Bridge MIDI, uh, sorry, Pirate MIDI Bridge 6, you can see if I click outro, you can see it's lit these are dimly lit right but then if i click intro you can see it switches to intro but then it also disables that light so it means that i can always see where i am in the set um rather than just pressing them and then trying to remember which one i'm on it'll tell me there'll be a visual clue where i am and which one i'm on so that's great um, and as i said in the previous video i can navigate through the set using these two buttons here um what i've done recently though so the new additions to this because i've already explained how that works before is I've got this rectify switch here and I've also got the um, expression sliders. So let's look at how I program these. We'll start with uh, rectify. So on this foot switch here, you can see I'm sending six CC messages when I switch it on. And then I'm sending six CC messages when I switch it off. Now I'll have to try and remember what these are. Um, let's have a little look. I can basically, instead of trying to tell you what, what each CC number is, I can just tell you what I'm doing actually on the Digitact. So let's also on the, um, the Syntact as well. So let me just come out of this. Let's go back to the machines and let's just have a listen to what it does, right? So if I press it, and I press it again. So let's break it down, right? So when I press this on, you'll notice that track one mute goes off. So I'm muting the kick with that. And I'm also muting track one and nine on, why is that not working? Oh yeah, cause I'm not in mute, so that's why. Let me go to mute. 
I keep now because I'm used to this, I'm pressing that. So I need to press that. There we go. Yeah, you can see it's switching off one and one and nine. One and nine is where I keep my sub and kicks. And one on here is where I keep my kicks. So I just did it as a test to see if I could send um, mute CCs to these. Um, I won't go into great detail of how I set this up in the settings and everything in this video, but we'll cover it in a future video. So yeah, it's basically disabling the low end, it's disabling the kick. The other stuff that it's doing, which is really cool, is if we go to Ableton, and I'm just going to mute everything but that sound. If we go to the Digitact, and we take a look at Raw 1. Check this out, right? So if I press play, and then if I hit the uh, Pirate Bridge 6, um, foot switch 6, look what it does to the purple macros. And then if we take a look at uh, Raw 2, you can see I'm changing the settings. Now, the reason why I did this, because when I was messing around with the ships, I was like, that sounds really cool when you... When you change the distortion like that, it adds this kind of like synth aspect to it. So I thought this would be like a really good build-up feature if I did that. Um, so that's pretty much it. If we go back to Chrome and take a look at that again, you can see we're sending these CCs out on channel 10, mainly. Um, six is my electron kick tracks. So that channel six is on both um, the syntax and the digitax. So my kick and my subs are on channel six, and that's how I'm able to mute them. Um, and then you can see this, all this stuff here, they're getting sent to Ableton. But then I also have an option if I want to, I can manipulate stuff on the machines as well as these by adding more messages in there. I can add up to 16 on the toggle on. Um, there's other ways you can send messages as well. Um, each foot switch can have many uh, different ways of doing stuff. And there's not only not only foot switches for the bank, you can also do global stuff as well. So there's like global expression messages on loads of stuff that I haven't even got into yet. You can also send like keystrokes out as well, which is just absolutely nuts. That's a new update. So the way you do it is you basically go plus MIDI. Uh, what do you want to send out? You can send any of these out. Uh, pitch bend, everything, smart messages. Um, what channel do you want to send it on? What's the number of the CC? And what's the what's the value? So when you press it, what value do you want it to send out? Then you can decide, do you want to send it out through the flexi ports? Do you want to send it out through the MIDI DIN 5? Or do you want to send it out through USB? So I just had to reset my camera there because I've got a 30 minute recording um, limit. So yeah, you, you basically get to do decide where you want to send CCs and how you want to send them, which is like really cool. I'm not even using it to, to its full potential yet. You've even got like LFOs in there and stuff as well. And you can play with the switch settings and rename them. There's just so much stuff you can do. And that's not even touching upon the expression um, sliders yet, which we'll get into. Um, one more thing as well about going through a set, you can also access a set list. So if you jump over back to the Pirate Bridge, I keep calling it that, Pirate Midi Bridge 6, and press these two, I think, you can see we've got a set list there and it's called set one. I can rename that. I can reorder all my tracks as well in a set. Um, and if I'm like playing in a club next week, I can make a club set. And then if I'm playing at a different club, I can make a brand new set for that club and so on. Or I can kind of categorize my set into blocks. So this could be like a techno section. Then I create another set for electro, etc. cetera. Um, Really good way of working because those of you that work with electron boxes will know it's so difficult to like navigate around a set. You have to kind of like know where the patterns are or write them down or rearrange them and that takes forever to do. This is a much quicker way of doing it. So yeah, that's another thing that I've got going on. Um, if we go to bank settings and take a look at the expression messages. So this is the sliders that we've got here. You can see expression one here. The reason why there's four as well is because what you can do is you can actually get, let's go to Pirate um, MIDI's website, uh, Pirate MIDI. I found these as well just on the off chance. Like I was looking for something like this and these just came up and then I was like, this looks great. I contacted them, they sent me this unit um, to test out and I've just fallen in love with it. Um, I will put an affiliate link down below as well. If you wanted to buy one, use my affiliate link and then I do get a cut from the sale at no expense to you, which helps me um, carry on making these videos so let's have a look then so on here i haven't bought one of these yet but i am thinking of buying one if i go to the shop yeah let's go to the, actually not the editor let me go back the shop and take a look 
at this expression doubler that's it so what you could do is you can you've only got two slots on the back of the pirate six you've got flexi one and flexi two with this you can basically expand it to four in so you could have four of these expression sliders if you wanted to which i probably will do in future because i'm a geek and i think that'll be great so yeah you can see expression one let's take a look at what that's doing expression one what it's doing is it's sending two control change messages um we are sending one to the kick channel let me just let me play around with this let me put these back on then if i've got this the wrong way around let me just check this one uh expression two here what have we got on there so this is going to channel four i'm so confused right now i can't remember what i did uh let me just figure this out right so oh yeah no 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 i've got it now um yeah expression let me just re-jog my memory right let's start with expression two pedal um because there's something going on on one which i don't understand why it's there so you can see on one here right i've got a uh, channel four uh <laughs> i'm so confused right let me let me try and rejog what i've done what i could do is i can go on the digital and have a look right so if i go to setup and i go to mod wheel the basic premise of these the idea is that i'm sending um i'm sending information to the modulation wheel let me just check this so yeah, you can see the top expression slider there that's controlling the mod wheel right and the mod wheel you can see it's doing it for all of the audio tracks so that one slider is through one CC message is controlling all these tracks. Um, and you can see the only track that I'm controlling with that mod wheel is um, the main kind of sound, this one. So as I open it, what I'm doing there is I'm opening the comb filter, a low pass filter, the amp decay, turning the volume down a little bit just to counteract the volume increase. And then we've also got effects reverb, which isn't working. But if I wanted to send that to it now, I could do like this. So it's really easy to set up. You basically um, just basically program them in using the options there and then the amount that you want to set. So let's take a look at expression one again. I can't remember what the other one was. So that's obviously going to the kick track. Oh, right, okay, yeah, because I separated the channels of these, if you go in to uh, MIDI config and then we go to channels, you can see that these were all on number four previously. So these first eight channels, they were all on MIDI channel four, but then I changed the kick track to six. So what I did was I just did a test, basically. I'm, so I could also send... Um, let me just go back in here to the mod wheel. It's just way, a way that I can basically send that information to the mod wheel as well. These expression sliders, for most patterns, will control the mod wheel and also the breath controller. So you can see the second slider controls the breath controller, which does a lot more. So let's have a listen to that. So it's doing a lot, but it's actually only sending three CCs out. I could send many more CCs, but just three. And what it's doing is it's controlling. Let's go through all of the different tracks. In fact, I better do that with everything on. So let's sit, let's go through each individual track. So track one, you can see mod wheel. I'm basically opening up the um, the high pass filter to get rid of the low end, reverb and delay, and also amp decay as well. For the snare, reverb, delay, bit reduction, turning the amp volume down a little bit. Um, I've somehow managed to put the metronome on. Let me try and get rid of that. There we go. It was on the syntax. Right, so, yeah, let's go back to that. Um... So we want to be on the breath controller, right? So breath controller. For this one, you can see, again, just effects and stuff like that. And then we've got... So it's also doing some stuff for track five, which is the main sound. Again, um, adding effects, sample rate reduction, getting rid of the low end. 
hats opening up the decaying sending some stuff into effects not doing anything for the rides and um, but all together you get this like really nice build up and then along with macro one as well this one this expression slider basically adding um crossfader functionality that you get on the Optus track to the Digitat and the Syntax, as well as Ableton and everything else as well. So yeah, we've got that going on. It's also worth noting as well with these, I can also control the macros on the Hydra Synth, which is good, which will go quite deep as well. So basically the idea behind these is to create these massive buildups using um, two macros. And then also I can use the slider on the Optus track as well. And I've also got some effects via the MIDI fighter. So I've got a lot of control to create a lot of uh, tension and release there, which is, exactly what's needed in an electronic live set um so yeah we've got that going on and then i think there was one more cc oh yeah so this one's worth pointing out as well if we go to the send effects and take a look at the yeah the reverb decay so as i bring that up so the way i've done that as well is if we go to the midi channels I will go into this a lot deeper and I'll show you how to set this up on your own machines um, in a future video. I'm just kind of covering it really quickly. So if we go to channels and take a look at the effects track, effects control is also on channel four. Then if you look at the um, if you look at the manual, you'll notice that it's got CC numbers in. So whatever CC numbers I select in the software for the Pirate Bridge, so the Pirate MIDI Bridge 6, um, will reflect for the CC number for whatever I'm trying to control. So I'm using a manual as I'm doing this. Um, you'll notice as well that tracks 9 to 14 don't have a MIDI channel at the moment. That's because I want to kind of keep these out of this because they're the MIDI tracks. Um, so that's pretty much it for that. Then I've got a snare. Just a snare at the moment on Syntax. I haven't really touched the Syntax much because I wanted to focus on this. Um, yes, yeah, so we've got them going on. There is another sound as well that comes in, which is the Typhon, and that is on channel 9. So we've got a MIDI track set up here. Quickly, though, before I move on to that, if I go into load preset, look what I've done. So I've got these MIDI tracks, one for Typhon, one for the MAM MD33, Hydrosyn, Digitat uh, Raw, so that's to control Ableton. Uh, raw for that track and then i've also got syntax raw which will be controlled from this on channel 14 or track 14 then i've got m variations which controls ableton's variations um which i explained before that's how i cr i store and recall presets for ableton as i go through the set so that's all triggered from track 12 and then let's just take a look at them so you can see as you go through these it will show you at the top what they are and then if I take off mute, you should be able to hear all of these, right? So there's the Typhon. There's the Mam MB33. And then we've got the Hydrosynth. So yeah, Hydrosynth there. And I can basically go in there and sequence them and things like that. Um, track 12 variations. That just sends out, I've talked about this before, sends out a MIDI note, which if we go to Ableton and click on midi you can see i've got these midi notes here linked to these clips and those clips will eventually have track names on them so you can see goops there and then when we press play you can see it triggers that clip which then triggers variations max for live device and once that gets triggered then it basically triggers all of the settings across um ableton so like all of the eqs It'll just like switch up all the pro cues and stuff to be the right settings for that track. Really cool stuff. And um, that gets sent from there. And then let's just go back to track nine again. And let's basically look at what we've got coming out of the Typhon. So this is one of the presets from a Typhon preset pack. And I've just sequenced it like eight notes with different velocities. So if you look at the velocities, and if I just do it normally like this, you can hear it's pretty boring, but velocity is linked to a number of different parameters. And you can just go like this, record it in like that, create like a nice little pattern. And 
then with with the Typhon as well, I can go into the settings on here. So I've turned these off at the moment. But what I've done is I have saved this as a preset, obviously. If I want to control the Typhon on a deeper level, I can enable these and I can go in and I've set some up previously. Um, filter resonance, envelope decay, high pass filter, high pass resonance, um, FFM, glide. Glide's good actually because I can change the glide time on the sequencer. These can all be mapped to the sequencer. That was the idea behind it. Um, wave, tune to, effects, some of the effect stuff. I um, can't remember what that was. Oh yeah, filter attack and um, uh, volume attack, so the amp attack. So yeah, I can do some different stuff for that. It's a little bit different on the MAM MB FET3 because if you go to MAM MB FET3, I can't MIDI control the MAM MB FET3. All you can do is send it notes and gate information and also velocity information, which will change the accent. So a little bit more restrictive, but what I have done with that one is if we just play with this, I can... Add some delay, can add some reverb, and then I've got all the settings on there. So if we go to Ableton, you can see on my MB Fit 3, I've got a reverb and delay rack, and that's just so that I can take it from being dry and add some effects to it. I've also got raw on all of those tracks as well, so all of these can be sweetened with overdrive and stuff like that as well. Um, so that's pretty much that. Let's get, let's go back to what we were just doing. So track nine. You don't want this. Let's turn that off again. So yeah, with this as well, all my presets for the Typhon, they have got after-touch settings that attach to them, and mod wheel settings as well, so I can like manipulate this from here. And if I wanted to, you know, I could send um, information from these expression sliders. I could route them to the Typhon. I'm going to figure that out later, but I obviously need to set up some MIDI channels on the Digitats as well to send the MIDI into here to control these two. And they can also be mapped for like a massive build up as well. So as you're bringing like this up, uh, as you're bringing this up, you could be bringing like one of these up as well. That just gives you an insight of how wild this can get because those expression sliders can control all the machines plus the synthesizers to create massive build ups. And these are these are additional. I don't. They're not like hard mapped in a way that I can't then just play with these on their own as well. Like I can still go in here and play with the synth and stuff like that. But then I've also got that if I need it as well. Um, that's pretty much it for that. Let me just see if there's anything else to talk about on here. I think we'll leave it there for now. Oh yeah, I'm also obviously changing uh, the preset as well using this. So. change presets on there same with all the other channels as well um that's pretty much it for that one i think we'll move on from that like i said i don't want to go too deeply into all of this just yet because there's a lot to talk about in the sensor program and i'll teach you how to do that later um i think that is it for most of like the sound design and setup Yeah, um, I think we'll leave it there. I don't think there's anything else to talk about. Let's just move over to Ableton and have a look at any changes that I've made in here. There's some changes on the DJ mixer now. We haven't even touched that during the session, have we? But uh, you don't want this. So obviously, like, change the settings on there. I've got reverb, reverb and delay as well. Um, we'll talk about that in another session because I don't want to make this video too long, but I'll show you how to set that up as a DJ controller with sends and returns and how to do, how to also do um, mixing between two different decks using one knob and how to basically create a loop on the Octus track to transition to a new track. So I'll teach you how to do that as well. Um, yeah, I think we'll call it. I think that's enough for now. So I'll see you in the next video and over the upcoming videos, we'll go deeper into either of these machines and I'll show you how to use them. Um, also, make sure you sign up as well to the mailing list below because the Digitats 2 Mastery course will be coming out soon and I'll keep you up to date when that drops.